So there I was working on a bot leg and I figured this would be a good opportunity to actually talk about a little bit of mesh machine and also the conundrum of cutting a circle in a curved surface. So if we take this piece into local mode, isolate it, I'll go back into viewport mode. Uh, we could press control tilde and look at our modifiers and we could see that there's quite a few modifiers here. So if I were to press Q and shift click on mod scroll we can actually see all of these modifiers and i could scroll through and you can see i start off with a mirror and then a subdivision and then a boolean and then i go through and i do several boolean cuts to create this shape and so the rest of these shapes were just slices that were cleaned up with uh, varying degrees of weld uh, for example this particular piece was a little bit painful to deal with but with a little bit of weld i was able to clean it up pretty nice in fact you can see that I had most of the modifiers actually locked down on this piece because I didn't want to deal with any of the nonsense that comes with having them resorted once you very specifically begin welding things to attempt to fix areas. So I was about to move on to the next piece of this and I was like, you know, I should do a video talking about what it would be like to cut a circle right here. Um, however, instead of talking about solving it with meshes and shrink wrap uh, via hops, it'd be fun to actually talk about mesh machines. So the first thing is I will need to apply all of the modifiers in place here. So we'll go ahead and do that and I'll press shift V and in box cutter we'll jump it over to view align mode and we'll look at it in ortho and just do a circle. That's not a circle. Press D bring up the shape, cut a circle, and this is our circle. And of course, this is the result that everyone has come to expect and know and love. So if you're a user of Mesh Machine, it's easy to just, well, firstly, let's um, duplicate this mesh, remove the Boolean, and we'll actually convert it to wire. It just keeps me sane. And then we'll shift click the main one and press Y and just stash it. And after stashing it, we can then, you know, select this and press Control A, Visual Geometry to Mesh to apply that. And I'm going to select this face and press Control Numpad Plus to grow it. And I have um, select loops actually mapped to Shift tilde. I have to say that every time, but I have it mapped to Shift tilde where I can then use something like Offset, or actually Offset Cut. Offset Cut's my favorite. It just fires a nice little loop protecting the perimeter. Uh, when it comes to modeling, I am all about protecting the perimeter. So now that we have the perimeter set, I can just press Control B, bevel it to just, you know, force some faces in. And you don't have to work this way, I just like it. I like pressing Y and choosing Fuse and just getting a nice fuse, which just for some reason feels like a 0.7 bevel. I don't know, just perfect to me. And we will just mark this. In the control tilde, my mark is set to mark everything. So seams are marked as well, which means I can press three and go in face mode and we can just hide these areas. I don't need to project normals of those, but we'll select this loop and just grow slightly, maybe a little more than slight. And we'll use circle to deselect some areas. And with this selected, I can press Y and choose normals, transfer. And because we stashed a unmodified, you know, better shaded version, we we're able to just project those normals. And after unhiding, we look at this and everything's looking pretty good, except for this area, which did not happen to me previously. So we will go in and use clear to just fix that area. In fact, we can actually grab probably this whole area and just do a transfer and it looks like it's not going to allow us unless we use projected and this would actually require me create a bit of an offshoot in order to correctly fix the shading there but the goal was to actually make a leg that would look good from about this far so in order to conclude this what i'll do is grab this area press i and then we'll press e to extrude press Control b to bevel and in order to bevel both the top and this piece, I'll put a loop here in order to select this and select this by just holding Alt and Shift and clicking each of them. And we can just control click mark 
I want to show the tooltip, just control click mark in order to bevel on a V group. And we must make sure the mesh is selected in edit mode or else we will not be able to bevel a mesh that is not selected in edit mode. We were able to fix that in box cutter, but it's not yet fixed in hops. So the next question is, how would I mirror this over to the other side without causing shading issues? And Mesh Machine also has a symmetry system for that, but if you're wanting to do it in a form of a modifier, you can also use either, let's see, we'll make the right selection. You can either use new modifier, or I believe uh, Symmetry will also do it in our version of Mirror now, but we'll just use Modifier and now we have the shape mirror to the other side. So to conclude, I will select these circles and press Q and under Material, we can just look at Material Scroll and I will just Control click to Blank Material Scroll and just get a blank material that I like. And by jumping back over to Look Dev, we can just look at the result. So. Really, I just wanted to get in there and just kind of show the conundrum of how I would solve a bot leg in my actual work uh, dealing with a uh, mesh machine. There's other ways, of course, we could solve this. We could also get very creative with the weld and see how far we can push the surface and reproject and play with sub D. But really, at the end of the day, I go with the option that uses the least amount of keystrokes, and for that reason, mesh machine. Now that the mesh is in this state, I really cannot end. And that's because everything's been applied, which means I can use another feature of Mesh Machine that I'm a fan of, and that is pressing Y and going to his plug library. Uh, plugs are a little bit different than KitOps inserts because they actually conform to the mesh and become part of it, which is just insane to me. This is just one of those things that I, I use it all the time, and uh, whenever it works, it does just work. So. We will select the mesh, shift select this, press Y, and we will plug. And now we have merged into this mesh. And you can see that the results have taken place on the other side. So, you know, whenever you begin applying, a whole nother journey begins. Like there's a whole non destructive journey I feel that you can experience. But whenever it comes to experiencing like the true power of Mesh Machine, um, you will definitely need to consider applying the mesh in order to really get in there and just experience the true power of what you're able to get when you're just able to kind of freely design. However, it is kind of a one-way street. So it is something that you might want to give a little contemplation to. However, you know, I just can't get enough of just getting in there and mirroring my meshes across, slapping materials on them and just very quickly getting to that near final result using Mesh Machine. I was about to just cut and print on the last video, but I realized that, you know, there's really no way I could um, not talk about this part because it is working better and better. Whenever it first came out, it was a little rough. However, now it has definitely gotten to the level that I'm able to blindly just demonstrate it just like this. I was um, about to print the video and was like, you know, I should, I should just show plugs. I mean, I'm having more issues with selection here than plugs themselves. But the very idea and the fact that it's able to work to this level to allow me to just quickly get to this, no doubt about it. So with that, I can wrap up this video.